Happy holidays, painting friends! It's Stoof here, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to do a holiday-themed acrylic painting tutorial in real time, and this is what we're going to make. <laughs> uh, this is just like a holiday wreath with some pine cones, pine needles, and berries. You can complete this painting in just under one hour if you follow the same technique that I did. If you aren't subscribed yet, make sure you hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any more of my fun painting tutorials like this one. And uh, let's dive into this painting tutorial. Today we're going to paint a holiday-inspired wreath with some pine cones and little berries and some uh, branches of like pine trees in it. Uh, so we're using an 8 inch by 10 inch canvas panel today. This is my palette. We're using acrylic paints and we have Vivid Lime Green, Thalo Green, Sap Green, which is at the end of the bottle so it kind of made a mess there, <laughs> Permanent Green, Yellow Ochre or Yellow Oxide, this one's uh, ivory black, this is alizarin crimson, this one's vermilion red, this one is cadmium free red light, this is flesh tint or like a rose blush color, um, this one is uh, burnt sienna, phthalo blue, burnt umber, dioxazane purple, and titanium white. We're probably going to use all of those colors today. I have a few brushes. We have one uh, large flat tip brush. We have a small flat tip brush. This is a number four. Uh, this is a liner brush here. And we have another, we have a number two flat tip brush that's kind of frayed. I also have a cup of water for rinsing off my brushes. And I have some paper towels. Uh, Viva paper towels are great for cleaning off your brushes and getting the excess paint off your brush when you're working. I'm going to start with some white and mm, let's do like a hint of purple. Whatever color you want your background to be, that's what we're doing here. So just very subtle, just doing little crisscross patterns with the brush on the canvas, not doing too much, not trying to go too crazy. So we're going to paint over a lot of this in a bit. Oh, that was a little much. It's going back and forth with crisscross patterns. very subtly adding this like light purple color. And then I'm going to take some of my phthalo and some black, blend that in with a little hint more purple. And this is going to be like our shadow. I don't want it to be too dark. And blend a little more white in there and just like crisscross that out, blend that into your background color so it's not too, you don't want to have like a solid line for your shadow, you want it to kind of fade in. So there's my little shadow that we're going to put the wreath over. We got the same thing over here, we got to add a little more shadow. Anytime you add some shadow, go back in with your pure white and do some crisscrossing. Put the brush right around there to brush it out. You can make it look like a really subtle little shadow. And uh, if you're using acrylic paint like I am, don't forget that acrylic paint dries darker than it looks when you put it down. Alright, 
Looks good to me, but this is all gonna get covered up down here, so we don't have to worry about that too much. All right, and then we're gonna go in, and I'm just gonna take some of my sap green, some of my thalo and my umber. And I'm just gonna start quickly and just try to use this flat tip brush to get these jagged lines. Again, I'm not going too detailed yet. I'm just trying to get the shape of my wreath for now. Just the very middle, bare bones part of the wreath. brush away we're done with the big brush now and we could take our liner brush and I think actually you know what next let's use our number four brush and flat tip brush and we're gonna start to just block in the shapes for where some of our pine cones are gonna go so I'm gonna have a pine cone here and all I'm doing right now is looking at the shape of that pine cone and trying to recreate that shape so it's not a perfect circle, but it looks like that. And then we got a bigger pine cone right here that its general shape is a little bit more like that. It's a much bigger pine cone. And all I'm doing is just filling in that whole shape with the dark burnt umber color for now. And we've got one more pine cone hiding down here. I want to go in with a couple areas that I see are in like deep shadow on the wreath. So I'm mixing my phthalo green with my sap green. And right here, there's a big deep shadow. So I'm just going back and forth with the brush. Make sure you covered up all that white space where your wreath is gonna go now. You don't wanna see any white space from the canvas poking through. All right, so we got that deep shadow in there. There's another little shadow. It's pretty deep up there. And let's see, where else? We got some shadows down here under this pine cone. And by adding these shadows in here, you're gonna make your wreath look less flat. It's gonna look more realistic and three-dimensional. And it's basically everywhere around the pine cones, there's a shadow under the pine cone. And this would be nice to make as like a Christmas card or just like a holiday craft together. All right, we've got those shadows in there. Now I'm gonna to start to add some actual like pine cone or pine needles, not pine cones, but pine needles. So I'm just gonna take my sap green and I'm dipping this brush in the water. This is my liner brush. It's a really thin brush. And by dipping it in the water, I can use it to get nice, thin down, easily control lines. So we got a big one here, see that? And you just carry the brush. You don't wanna push too hard. If you push really hard, it's gonna make a really thick line. So I got the base, and then now we're just gonna come in and make a bunch of little needles that come off of that one. And you can see I'm pressing so gently. If you make a mistake, you can let it dry and paint over it or just layer over it like something's kind of covering it up almost. And if you, your paint starts to get hard to control or like clumpy, then just dip your brush back in the water and keep going with the next 
set of pine cones, pine needles. <laughs> All right, and now I'm gonna take some of this other green. So also by using a mixture of greens and not just one color green, you're also helping to make this look more realistic. So I mixed my permanent green with my sap green now. And for this one, we've got, this guy's like sticking out and then it's got the long needles kind of coming all over the place. I'm gonna mix a little bit of my, well, I guess a lot of bit of my uh, ochre into that. Got another one coming out here. And if you're having trouble controlling the brush in the way that I'm doing that, um, just keep practicing with it. Maybe practice on like a piece of paper first or something using different amounts of pressure with your hand as you're pressing onto the canvas. Cause that is how I'm getting a little, I'm getting a little bit of a um, phthalo green in here now. Uh, but the, the amount of pressure you use is how you control your pine needle lines. All right, I'm gonna take more ochre, some of the later flushy color and my permanent green and that vivid lime green. It's gonna take vivid lime green, mix it in another little spot here to get it a little bit less light. So now we got these three variations here. Gonna dip that in the water. And then here we've got This one's got a couple little branches coming off of it. Middle line again there because it's a little lighter. Okay, got another one like that over here. Use my vivid lime green, some green permanent, and do some highlights. So just lightening up a few of these needles. And there, and here. Mix a little bit of my umber and sienna. See if we can get this one. This one has to start out a lot darker down here and get lighter. Mix a little bit of black. It's my sap green and phthalo green. And we'll throw some darker ones in on here. Just keep doing this all the way around until you get all your little pine needles and your wreath.
I'm gonna mix some more of my brown. A couple of these have little brown spots. Back to my light green permanent. sienna in there. Some spots. We'll go back to our vivid lime green. Add those highlights in here. Gonna go back up to this area. It's a really repetitive process, but it's very calming. All right, that's a mistake there. We can clean that up later. Get a little more thalo. Just keeping building up the depth and making it look more realistic. take a little more black with my phthalo green and just darken up a couple things down here. Let me just add a few more little branches in there. If you have any sections that just look like too dull, 
that would be a good spot to add more pine needles. And while that's drying, we're going to work on the pine cones again. So we're going to go back to our flat tip brush. And now we're going to add some highlights. So we're going to take some of our flesh tint color or like our light rose with some burnt sienna and some ochre and some umber. And we're just going to Start by adding a few little U-shaped patterns like this. And you could take just some brown and start to carry these shapes in towards the center of the pine cone. These get a little bit more spaced out as you're Coming up, you can't quite see as much of the little shelly part of the cone. So you can get to the top of it. And now I'm going to go in with my liner brush, take some white, just blend it in with that lighter color, and just take your liner brush and add the little lip for the pine cone. Edge pieces. And then you can add a little bit more like blue or black to the pieces on the this side. You still want them to be light, but a little more in shadow over here. And then you got a cute little pine cone sticking out at you. You can do a little bit more to it with the um, 
burnt sienna. If you just add like a little more burnt sienna, you can even give it that bit, that much more color and depth. Let's add it to a couple spots. And if you just take your pure umber, you can build up the shadows around some of them. You can add some purple in there. That'll help you build up the shadows too. And you got a nice looking pine cone. I'm gonna mix a little bit of purple with my greens down here for this shadowy part. Just getting fancy. <laughs> All right, and that is that pine cone. Now let's move up to this pine cone. Just gonna mix some of our sienna with white again. Get our little U shapes. are a little closer together at the bottom. Okay, there's that pine cone, and we can take some umber and sienna. Touch up a few of these at the bottom where they're sticking out more. This pine cone's smaller, so it's a little harder to get those details in. Take some black and some purple, or umber and purple. And then we'll take some white and our flush tint color. Build up the highlights a little more. And then let's do this pine cone down here, and then that's it for the pine cones. They just always have these little U shapes that kind of come around the main center seed piece. Highlight in there, and I'm gonna take some black, umber, and we're just gonna build up our shadows here. All right, I'm gonna take my flat tip brush, dry it off nice, 
and we're going to start with the shadowy darker parts of the berries so we're going to take crimson mixed with black just a little black you don't want to go too much and we're going to mix uh, let's mix some yeah that looks good all right we're mixing some of our um, burnt sienna in there too all right, and then if you have a round tip brush, it might be a little easier here, but if you just make a bunch of little circles and little clusters, those can be your berries. You can put as many or as few as you'd like. If you have anything like awkward that you want to cover up, you could cover it up with these berries. <laughs> And we're starting out with the shadowy berries and then we're gonna brighten this up more later. Try not to make them like in perfect symmetry with each other. You could put a cluster of berries somewhere. Just like one solo one somewhere. I think that is everywhere I want to have some berries on my painting and I'm just gonna while I have this brush I'm gonna clean off all that red while I'm waiting for the darker red to dry I'm just gonna touch up this spot where we made that little mistake earlier just taking a hint of black tiny hint of blue some white and then Ta-da! Easy fix. Go down here and touch up some of these shadows I put in here too to make them a little less extreme because we don't have branches sticking out too much. And I'm going to keep letting this base color for the berries dry and I'm going to go back and add another little round of some highlights to the pine needles. So mixing white with phthalo green and some ochre. If you do this, just be careful you don't touch the red and the berries or it's gonna get in your green.
Just a little bit of red. <laughs> Right. I'm liking that. Now let's go and add some highlights on our berries. So I'm just going to take some vermilion. I can mix a little bit of that um, pale rose blush flesh color in there. And now we're going to add just a little dab on each of these berries. This is like your little highlight. Don't completely cover up your whole berry, but like the left, top left three quarters. Turn this to every single berry. It's looking pretty now. Alright, and then the final touch is to take your liner brush and some white, maybe with a little bit of that flesh color. And we're just going to add. to be too obnoxious of a highlight, not just like, bam, pure white, maybe pure white, but like blend it in just a little bit so it's not too much. Uh, if you want to do a little bit more, you could add just like some straight, like if your reds need a little more red, 
your berries need a little more red, you could add like some dabs of just your straight um, cadmium free red light. Get to a few of them, maybe not all of them, but that'll help to brighten up the painting some more and make things a little bit warmer. And that's the finished painting guys. All right guys, that wraps up our painting tutorial to paint this little holiday themed wreath. This is just in a standard black frame. If you put this in a frame, it obviously looks much more complete and now it's ready to hang up. I hope you enjoyed following along with this tutorial. I wish you happy holidays and I wish you a safe and healthy new year coming up soon. Thank you guys for hanging out with me and doing these painting tutorials. It means a lot to me uh, that you care and that you enjoy them. I also really appreciate your kind comments. Thank you guys so much. Have a great day and happy painting!